Welcome back. You're watching the Women's Day special on Money, Money, Money every day. It's Women's Day, so we have 365 days of the year. Yet, it's always a good time to sort of uh, drill it down to the micros and talk about uh, some basic tenets of wealth management and money management. So, uh, let's uh, sort of talk about age groups, Radhika, because that's pretty much how it works with uh, you know financial management and planning. Now, if we're talking about young working women, as you said, I mean, it starts from there, right? Having the right career uh, moves, making the right choices and being focused. So women as they start off mid-twenties and the income flow starts coming in, what would you say to them when it comes to managing their own wealth? So I think the first and foremost ad advice is to start really early. Um, and I can't emphasize this enough because what happens in any process, especially money, is that you will make mistakes. I mean, I did, you did, everybody will. Um, you know, and you will learn. You will learn what your risk understanding is, what your goals are, you'll learn all this. When you make those mistakes in your 20s, when actually you've not earned that much income, by the time you get to 30s, I think you become a much smarter investor. I think young women and young professionals, when they start out thinking, they think, you know, I only earn 20,000 rupees a month. If I save a few thousand, what difference is it matter? going to make? Yeah. Investing is a habit. Um, so what I would tell young women is that when you've started to earn, one, get financially savvy, get basically financially savvy and take out a monthly corpus. Start that habit of saving mm -hmm. and start putting that away mm -hmm. into something. I'm not even mm -hmm. going into what that something mm -hmm. is, but start that process. At least get the discipline going. Get the discipline yeah. going of saving and mm -hmm. get the habit of being financially savvy. Know your basic fixed deposits, equities, yeah. etc. Et 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 basic products. Yeah. You're not going to be perfect. You actually don't need mm -hmm. to be mm -hmm. perfect. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So at least start taking interest, start knowing basic products and think about your own savings, uh, which will eventually turn into investments as well. Uh, Mr. Rungta, your thoughts on this. Now, one situation that always arises, uh, you know, everything starts with goal setting. Now at 25, 27, 28, you don't know what your goals are. You don't know if you're going in for higher education, dropping your job midway, getting married, or, you know, suddenly you have to take care of a parent as well. So it's very difficult to chart out a, a long drawn roadmap for this age group. What would you advise here? See, one of the things that we do, people have this mistaken notion that financial planners hmm. will ask you to invest today. Hmm. So that you, you know, uh, you enjoy a good life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the aim of financial planning has to be to be able to enjoy your life. Hmm. Okay, when you are still capable of enjoying your hmm. life. Okay, hmm. and I think that comes from lack of guilt while spending your own money. Hmm. Okay, and that guilt does not come hmm. when you know that you are doing enough hmm. and that the path on which you are hmm. will help you meet all the goals that you have set for yourself. Person. But okay, what's a rule of thumb to follow over here? I mean, depending on your income flow and the actual, you know, expenses, some might have rent as an expense or, you know, living expenses. Out of whatever remains, what should be the rule of thumb between saving? What should be the first instrument you look at? How do you begin? When you are young, mm -hmm. because your earnings are still to come, your mm -hmm. best days are still to come, mm -hmm. uh, you need to spend, the way you should look mm -hmm. at it is whatever you are earning, mm. you are only earning 70% of whatever you are earning. Okay. 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 That is your salary, that is your income, if mm. you are self-employed, mm. the rest is not there. Assume it's not there. Assume you are earning 30% less than what 30, you are actually earning. Okay. And that 30% gets put aside okay. for your future self. Okay. 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 And Magically, mm -hmm. if you put that constraint on yourself, mm. your expenses, your expenses yeah. can yeah. expand to meet the amount of income available. Mm. They can also contract to meet the amount of income True. you make available True. to them. True. True. I think so, that that's a great way of putting it because otherwise, all these decisions. I mean, you can uh, you know rent a house which might be fifty thousand rupees a month or forty thousand. It's all decision making at the end of the day. And once you've carved out. The savings portion, savings first. slash investment first, you know this is how much you're left with and this is how you have to sort of be within your means as the uh, age old wisdom uh, goes and says. So I think this is this is a great uh, ground to start on for the young working professional lady. Now let's come to the uh, middle age group, bulk of women out there who are in profession or maybe even homemakers. Now here the concept of money uh, has a lot of different sort of angles to it Radhika, right? Because there's a spouse involved, there's a family involved. What have you seen here and what are your first thoughts about this group? So I think 
<coughs> this is an important phase because mm -hmm. this is where you're earning the maximum income. Mm -hmm. This is also where you're probably, uh, you know, you have the maximum financial needs mm -hmm. in terms of potentially a home that you want to buy, which is very, very expensive, uh, children's education. Mm -hmm. You know, many women want to start a business in their 30s or 40s mm -hmm. after they've worked for some time. So I think you have a lot of needs. And this is the time to get reasonably financially savvy. If you're not, uh, you know, you can go through your 20s making a few mistakes, but by the time you're in your 30s and 40s, mm -hmm. I think you really need to get sort of more solid, just like you do in your mm -hmm. career, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, one thing is that I think money should be a family decision. I think both husband and wife should be very, very involved in talking about money, whether one is earning or whether both are earning. Mm -hmm. Because ultimately money, as Harsh said, is used to fulfill goals. Mm -hmm. um, and at this point in your 30s, I think you should chart out what your goals are. You will have 20-year-old goals. You will have 20-year-old goals like a child's marriage or a foreign education for a kid. You will have 10-year goals, you will have 5-year goals, you may have immediate goals. Mm -hmm. I think once you've agreed on those goals, then you start carving out pools of money, you know, so your debt is going to meet your one-year goal. You know, for your longer-term goals, you can obviously take more risks. But it's very important to come together and decide what those goals are going to be at different points mm. in time. Oh, absolutely. I think uh, that's really the stepping stone and perhaps the most important By the way, homemakers mm. should be, just because you're not earning doesn't mm. mean you should not you be You don't involved. have a say. Yeah, that yeah. you don't have a say and that you can't have a say. You can still mm. be a very, you know, there was a concept of Sridhan once upon a time and, mm. you know, women were very good budget keepers of the home. Mm. So they can still be very involved in planning the family's finances. Oh, absolutely. Uh, Mr. Rungja, your thoughts on this because you, you sort of uh, advise couples and you, you see this come together. Uh, do women really have an equal say in a lot of these matters or how do you see their involvement? Uh, so do they have an equal say? At least the women I meet mm -hmm. do. Mm -hmm. I mean because mm -hmm. I tend to meet the more professionally qualified mm -hmm. and uh, do they want to have I think it's, <laughs> it's more the intention mm -hmm. rather than the ability. Mm -hmm. That's one. Mm -hmm. I think at this time as Radhika said you know they're earning their most uh, and I think if they have not already set those ground rules, I think couples go through this, uh, uh, what shall you say, a little bit of a... Um, a rough patch? A, a, you'd not say, a rough or, patch, it's an adjustment, adjustment process. Adjustment phase, okay. Uh, where you deal with this, your money, you know, my, my money, money, your money, yeah. our, our money, money yes. your goals, my goals, mm. our goals. Correct, mm. correct, correct. And I think going through this openly and mm. successfully, mm. And I think that's where you use people like us. Mm, mm, mm. But basically, I think if you don't do this at this stage, mm, mm, okay, mm. Uh, this one of the biggest reasons for discord am among couples mm. is the use of money. Absolutely. And it does not matter whether it is my money, mm -hmm. I have earned it, mm -hmm. or she has earned mm -hmm. it. If it is, say, going to be used for a uh, assisting one of my relatives. Sure. Even if it is money earned by me, hmm. I am sure my wife has a say hmm. in whether that money hmm. should be used for my... Real so I think these things... These are the real soft issues that, that you need to go uh, over. But you need yeah. to make sure that mm -hmm. you have a working understanding Absolutely. on how you will resolve mm -hmm. these soft issues. Mm -hmm. After, I mean, obviously, you need to have goals and you need yeah, to invest, yeah, yeah. but all that can but the go the bedrock up. is right here, yeah. which is why I'm going to ask you another sensitive question on the this question of your money, my money, our money. Mm -hmm. uh, and here is where the conversation is has to be, you know, gentle, subtle, and yet it needs to be had, right, Radhika? So for a couple, uh, and it could be a very personal choice, it yeah. depends on person to person. But would you say it's essential for a woman, uh, even a married woman, to have the concept of her own money? Is that sense of security something that perhaps women should always consider, even while there's joint planning going on for, for the family? I, as I think you said this is a very personal conversation, mm -hmm. so I'll share my view and it may not be everyone's. I think wholeheartedly, yes. Um, I think, you know, just like you have control of your own career, uh, it is important to have uh, control knowledge uh, and comfort with your mm -hmm. own finances because we work very, very hard to earn money. Uh, life is unfortunately uncertain. Absolutely. Um, and, uh, you know, money is not everything in life. Um, but when untoward incidences happen and one sees so many of these, you know, just being financially sound and secure as a woman mm -hmm. gives you a lot of choices. Absolutely. And gives you a lot of freedom. Yeah. But I also think that 
having control of your own money, having your mm -hmm. own account, etc., doesn't mean you can't have a wonderful relationship with your spouse. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that both of you can't sit and plan goals together. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean that there are some things that you want to spend your money on that your spouse may disagree, but because you are running, you also do that. Yeah. So it doesn't mean yeah. that, you know, it's not black and white. Mm -hmm. uh, but the starting point, in my mm -hmm. view, needs to be that you have control over what you want. Absolutely. So go out there and have the conversations you need to have, even though they might be slightly uncomfortable, because in the longer term, in the longer run, they really help uh, you, your spouse and the family. We're going to take a break on this note. On the other side, financial planning advice for women as they're approaching retirement when they need to get ready for their silver years. Extremely important conversation coming right up.